have focused much of our energies on three formats, the JPEG Excel, the WebP, and the AVIF. Though in more trace amounts and very narrow support, the JPEG 2000 is still being used on the web today. But at 20 years old, it too is suffering from being a little long in tooth and as well is being considered for an update. So to talk about this and what is now being called the high throughput JPEG 2000 or the HTJ2K or the HT is Dr. Pierre Anthony Lemieux. Enjoy. All right. I'll let you take the stage. So let's see. Let me just uh, share my screen here, make it easy. Yeah, so thanks, uh, Henry, for uh, having me today here. And I uh, know it's a little short notice, and I really welcome the opportunity. And uh, today, I um, just want to talk about uh, High Throughput JPEG 2000, which is abbreviated as HTJ2K, but because uh, it's a really a mouthful, we'll, we just call it HT. And um, compared to some of the other projects that we've heard earlier today, this uh, is a very really fundamental, fundamentally different approach where um, there's been an effort going on for a couple of years where instead of uh, starting from scratch and inventing a new codec, however fun that is, you know, from basic principles, um, we actually uh, looked at an existing codec and really tried to fix and improve what people have been complaining about for years. Um, and that codec is JPEG 2000. And th the reason I think this is interesting is, well, first, it's, uh, it's unusual that codecs get revised. But also, um, by revising a codec, you uh, kind of uh, leverage all the million man hours that have gone into it, right? All the code base, all the interop. You know, people know how it breaks at low bit rates. Um, people understand kind of its uh, coding efficiency versus quality. So you get to reuse a lot of that. And I think uh, that was actually really interesting. And also in the case of JPEG 2000, you start from a basis that's uh, extremely, extremely flexible, right? And uh, it can do lossy and lossless. It does resolution scalability, progressive downloading. It does region of interest accessibility. You know, you can have a gigapixel image and just request this one little corner and get it immediately. Uh, it doesn't use iterative rate control. Um, supports high dynamic range. So for instance, it's regularly used at 16 bit today. It can support even higher number, uh, higher bit depth, support multi-channel images. So uh, RGB or YCBCR is common, but of course, in the case of raw images, you have typically two green channels. Of course, in more specialized applications like astronomy, you might have a infrared channel. And so JPEG 2000 supports all of this out of the box and the code base is out there to support all of this. And finally, it's a, international standard with uh, royalty-free objective. Um, you know, back to some discussion earlier, for instance, a uh, li little known fact, JPEG 2000 is today supported, for instance, in Photoshop and Acrobat and Safari, although apparently there's some bugs there. Um, one of the complaints about JPEG 2000 from the, really from the onset um, was uh, uh, the complexity. Um, and specifically the complexity of its uh, block coder, which is an arithmetic block coder. And that's been a real impediment for adoption in, in many areas. And so this pro HT is really about fixing that recurring complaint, right? Nobody complained about JPEG 2000 being able to do 16-bit, 12-bit, 10-bit because it does them all. People have been primarily complaining about the complexity of the, um, of the block coder algorithm. So. Uh, HT is really about replacing this block coder, this arithmetic block coder with a block coder that's uh, a lot more adapted to today's highly parallel architectures and, um, and, and essentially keep all the benefits of JPEG 2000, uh, but increase uh, the throughput many, many times over by many orders of magnitude. So for instance, uh, you know, up to 30X uh, at lossless. And uh, that comes uh, only with a slight decrease in coding efficiency, um, approximately about 6% on average for natural images. Um, now, the, the, the kind of neat thing about just replacing, by the way, the block coder is that that's the actual lossless part of the algorithm. And so that means that uh, HT code streams uh, can be transcoded back and forth with legacy JPEG 2000 code streams with absolutely no loss. And so that allows, for instance, folks to uh, build their own internal pipelines entirely around HT, but still be able, for instance, to ingest or deliver 
legacy JPEG 2000 to um, uh, to folks that don't support HD. And again, this is a this is kind of a totally novel concept, right? Because most of the time people start from a blank sheet, from a codec, and it's naturally incompatible with with previous codecs. It also means that, for instance, it's a um, drop in replacement for JPEG 2000 in existing file formats. Uh, just uh, again, there's um, um, John, uh, Jan kind of conveniently went over all the JPEG stuff, so I'm not going to go over that. Um, um, and uh, there's a lot of literature about JPEG 2000 and HT, which is another advantage. But just to give you a flavor of how fast HT is, just comparing it to plain old JPEG. Uh, so plain old JPEG is the blue curve. Uh, this is frames per second encoding speed, and this is bits per pixel. And, um, and the difference between the two red curves is the double red curve is uh, multiple threads. And that's actually one of the main advantages of HT uh, compared to, for instance, plain old JPEG. It's much, much, much uh, more easily to parallelize. And so here, you know, at one thread, uh, HT is already faster in uh, most, if not all, circumstances that plain old JPEG. But once you, of course, increase the number of threads, it's uh, significantly faster. And uh, here again, uh, this is just an uh, indication. You know, you don't the eight six percent coding efficiency that you lose uh, still make it uh, much much um, more coding efficient than uh, than plain old JPEG. Um, and actually, I really want to echo something that Jan mentioned earlier, and I think that should really be part of the discussion here, is you'll see a lot of discussions comparing codecs at very low bit rate, you know, 0 0.25 bits per pixel, 0 0.5 bits per pixel. And images look terrible at those bit rates, right? And while that might be appropriate for video, uh, I think using bad images on the web, I, I, I don't think there's a place for that anymore, right? I mean, trying to sell Nike sneakers that look like uh, kind of uh, old JPEG with, um, with ringing artifacts or blockiness is, should really be a no-go today. So hopefully we, the discussion should really be about uh, high quality images on the web. So around you know, three or four bits per pixel or certainly, certainly starting at two bits per pixel. Um, so again, so this is, I think, just one of my soap boxes. Uh, you know, stop comparing codecs where they break down. I mean, that's academically interesting, right? But I think for the web today, it's, I, I don't think it's highly relevant. Uh, some resources. Um, so it's a published specification, both by ISO and ITU. And uh, back, uh, we were discussing this over the break. Uh, we're working hard to make those specs available for free. Um, it's uh, really changing the minds of bureaucrats in Geneva. So if you're interested in helping, let me know. File formats, um, again, because it's um, essentially using the same structure as JPEG 2000, it's a you know really drop-in uh, replacement for JPEG 2000 in professional file formats like MXF. There's also a mapping to HEIF. Uh, it has its own uh, native file format, JPH. Um, that's um, very similar to JP2. And there are some conformance code streams available. There's some reference software. There's a commercial implementation. There are multiple open source implementations. I want to talk about this for a few seconds next. So there's some, uh, so this one, OpenGPH, is a C implementation that can be transpiled into JavaScript. And we'll see them in a few seconds. There's also a MATLAB implementation for folks that really want to go more into details and maybe want to do their own implementation. Um, so, but really what I'd like to show now is uh, a pause. So this uh, open source library, so this is uh, on GitHub, it's available today. And it has, there we go. So let me see if I can make that full screen. All right, oh, I have to. All right, so this is the HT decoding in a browser, um, uses a JavaScript uh, decoder. Um, so this is a, um, the full resolution image. Um, and a couple of them, well, first, the primary demonstration is you can actually download, uh, decode HD in a browser just with polyfill. Uh, but also some of the really neat feature of JPEG 2000 that uh, HT inherits is, for instance, progressive decoding, progressive decoding right? So um, you can decode the first 826 bytes of the image and get this all the way to the complete image. Um, and um, you can, of course, do the same, not by 
actual size, but keep the size the same and just do it by resolution. Um, a really cool experiment is um, I do a lot of work in digital cinema and you know there are 4K images and it's uh, kind of really neat to be able to um, decode just a sub-resolution of a 4K image is pretty much instantaneously. Um, and that's again built in, H in HD. Um, so let's see, going back here. Um, so again, um, so this is available today and um, we're really interested in feedback, um, interest, um, and um, again, the goal here, I think, is really have the, the discussion, what should we do with images in the long run on the web? You know, what's the right, what's the right approach? And uh, uh, consider the various options that we've heard today. Well, thank you very much. And uh, Henry, back to you uh, for questions. Merci, 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 merci. Uh, that was a lightning talk. Uh, uh, you know, you, you kind of went through the details uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, and, uh, you know, for those who aren't familiar, first of all, I'm sure not many might be familiar with J JPEG 2000, let alone uh, HT. Um, I mean, I'm going to give you the obvious questions right away. Uh, and one is going to be, uh, well, actually, there's probably going to be a couple obvious questions, but one's going to be, um, you know, how do you feel about what uh, is looking like uh, a sort of like, in a, a room that's getting smaller and smaller, uh, you know, between AVIF and, you know, we have JPEG Excel, we have WebP that's now fully entrenched into the browser and, and you, you know, having to introduce uh, HT in the ecosystem. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that it would have been a very different answer 15 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with WebAssembly and and the performance of JavaScript, it's now realistic to do polyfills that actually really work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I think that really lowers the bar to, um, to, to it, at first experimenting with new technologies and new codecs. Um, I think, that, again, the discussion should be really about features, right? And when I look at what's coming down the line, you know, for low resolution, RGB 8-bit image, we already have an answer, right? It's JPEG. <laughs> so, so I think the discussion should really be about the future, about HDR images, about, uh, for instance, raw images, you know, four-channel images, should be about huge images, right? I mean, I, um, I just, the other day, I was on a uh, National uh, Oceanographic, uh, the NOA, NOA website, and, you know, they have mega images, and it's actually downloaded as JPEG and it takes, you know, 30 seconds to download them, right? Mm -hmm. That should not happen nowadays, right? There should be a way to deal with very large images because devices can actually take very large images. So I think um, I'd like to, you know, put the context of a discussion of codec and uh, put a discussion of codec in that broader context. Where mm -hmm. do we want to be in the future and how, what's the right codec to solve that problem?